Hello. Yay. Yay, we're back. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Mystery oh. Files Home Solices. It's been so long. I know we've missed you all so dearly. I know, it I'm hurts. so happy. That's deep, but we we're have, excited. We are back for season <laughs> four. four. Honestly, I didn't know what season it was before yeah. coming into this. I went season something, something, something. I mean, it, it's probably, like, weird for people who watch it because we only have two seasons uploaded on our yeah. things. So, like, what are they talking about? Well, is the summer tapes up? Part of it is. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, like, okay, yeah. That's technically season three, but it's kind of, like, its own thing, you know? Well, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to get into. I was about to be, like, the last thing we did was, <laughs> depending on <laughs> who you really talk to, you know? It's depending like, on the timeline. It's, like, know? did you watch the summer tapes? Or did you watch, like, the last season and then jump to this one? Because it's, like, all yeah in, like, order. It's weird. I don't know. Well, now that I'm thinking of it, like, from an outsider's perspective, the time mm-hmm. jump has to be a little whack. Yeah, no, it's probably really fun. And also, like, I feel like <laughs> if they look at the Summer Tapes audio, <laughs> like, the quality is just so, They're gonna be like, ooh, like, I think podcasts don't yeah. go down in quality so bad. My gosh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, literally though. Everyone on um the YouTube's getting the exact same. Brand. They're like, wow, sounds exactly how I thought it was. Honestly, we're just I'm I'm just too lazy to edit the audio over top. I'll be yeah, honest. See, if you know? Premiere would stop crashing my laptop, maybe we'd fix it. Yeah, maybe you we'd know? fix it. Maybe if Premiere is a little better. Yeah, they're gonna start um, any sort of brand deal ever with me. I also I'm looking at our episode list. I just remembered we posted like the Halloween special too because we never oh. posted it on um our podcast. Wow. So I was just like, so it's just like weird because it's like the. Mm-hmm. Summer tapes, and then it's like, like the Halloween special. <laughs> but we want to get the content out there. Yes, and people have to see the summer tapes because they yes. were a fun part of our quarantine summer. Of course, they were. Yes, they That's what us. kind of brought um, us to do more independent work yeah. with the show, which I think is really, really cool. And it helped us turn into a podcast, and so yes. it was just very fun. And speaking of that, um, mm-hmm. We hit over a hundred streams on this podcast, ah! so thank you guys so much for yes, listening to us. We appreciate you, and also I wanted to give a little fun shout out to over um, winter break. We had our twelve days of mystery on our TikTok, yes, and it was pretty. It was pretty much a hit. It was really fun. Yes, that was really really yeah. fun. That was a good one. Yeah, I, really I honestly forgot we did that for a hot second, and I was like, wait, there was that's kind of like our own like little mini thing that we did mm-hmm. that like. We yeah, need to talk about. We talked about wanting to do something like that again mm-hmm. soon. Um, yeah. You can follow us at, it's, I think it's the Mystery Files official. Yeah, I think it's just the Mystery Files official yeah. on TikTok. Yes, yeah, so please follow us. You can find all our social medias on our page. Uh, yeah. We got you. We got you. <laughs> follow us on Instagram at Mystery Files yes. underscore. And also follow us on YouTube at Just the Mystery Files. So. Yes, please. We still haven't uh, reached enough subscribers to have our own name yet. Yes, it's just a would, bunch of letters. We would really <laughs> just love if you would follow us on YouTube. Honestly, yes. if you watch us, great. But if not, just a little, a little subscribe to like, get us subscribe. kicking. Yeah. Sniffle, sniffle. But no, so. your guys' love on our episodes has been... Just yeah, great. It makes our hearts smile every time. We see a new little listener. We yeah. love you all so much. We get excited every time like we get like one listener on yeah. something. And we're like, oh yay. It's a cute little celebration, so thank you. <laughs> For some reason, um everyone hated the Salem Witch Trials in um Big the ouch. uh Alcatraz escape attempt. And you know, that's okay. I, I don't blame you. Honestly, I get it, but like also it's awesome. So like yeah. we choose you. But. It's it's our it's our least streamed episode, so if wow. you like want to give them some love. They're pretty good episodes. Yeah, they are. They're I thought fun. I thought they were one of our Especially better ones. Especially the Alcatraz one. That was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, Alcatraz was funny. You we talked Alcatraz. about submitting that, I think, too. See? Yeah, you so gotta listen. Exactly. Do you want to li- listen to the award winning yeah. mystery files? Do you want to be a part of our experience? Go like listen to one of our streams. Whatever one is the streamed one that's streamed the most, that'll be the one we submit. So whatever one piques your Bet. fancy. Bet it's exactly. Fun. But yeah, and now yeah. we're back and we're ready to party for Miss Yay. Season Four, and we're so glad you guys are along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> we last talked about. I'm, I was just looking at the list, so I'd remember we last. Mm-hmm. It was my case. Ooh. It was the man in the iron mask, which was a pretty oh, fun episode. Oh, yes. That was our season three finale. I was thinking about that the other day, because I think I was watching a Scooby-Doo episode that had something with, like, an iron mask no or something. Way. But I don't think it was the same sitch, but I was like, Scooby-Doo. Why does everything we do just always come back to the Scooby-Doo It franchise? really does. Wait, can you Google the iron mask Scooby-Doo? I want to see if it was, like, okay. some sort of dream state that I was in, if I made it up, or if it was, like, actually a real thing. But I'm pretty Google sure it was real. No, it's very real. Oh my goodness, see Oh, me. God. He's kind of cute. I don't know. In the Scooby-Doo universe? Everyone Google Iron Mask Scooby-Doo. He's kind of cute. Wow. No. 
Wow. I kind of like him. I don't know. I'm kind of a fan. I don't know. He seems kind of I'm glad I didn't strong. make it up, because sometimes <laughs> my memory likes to blend in my dreams, and then I don't know mm. what's real. Tee hee hee. <laughs> people are like going to like the the therapy sites trying to f- find they something go, for you what's wrong with her <laughs> i can't quite put my finger on it oh my gosh my ghost is falling off my cup Mm-mm. i put a little ghost sticky note that someone left in the podcast <laughs> studio and he's slowly making his way off my coffee oh my mug. goodness but he's cute he's haunting us tonight. he's cute he's a little cutie he's a little cutie but he's our know. he's our uh third host wait can he be our mascot <laughs> Can we have, can I podcasts, don't think we have a mascot. Pa- pa- podcast. I mean, he could be because we have like uh, the branding with the ghost in front of the log cabin, which is Yay. a sickening photo, yes, by the way. We love her. That's like the best I think photo I we've made ever her taken. On Canva. That, we love the Canva. Edit of her. Yes. We love that. We do love Canva. This is not an ad, <laughs> but I still love her. This is not an ad for Canva. It is, in Sponsor fact, an us. ad for our own show, though. Yes. Follow us. <laughs> So yes, we're excited to be here, yes. and I'm so ready to see what this week has in store. I'm so I, excited. I've been waiting patiently. I'm so excited. And my heart is so overwhelmed. It's I'm just, gonna... I think what you're going to be, I'm, I think you're going to be most excited about the theories, because it's um mm, okay. something very, very uh, reoccurring with us as a show, oh, if no. anyone's an avid listener knows. Ooh. Okay. Should I, like, give so, you a little drum roll yes, before you please. say anything else? Okay, <clears> so... I don't know, I'm clearing my throat, I'm drumming on the table. <laughs> but, okay, Sometimes here we go. I'll, I'll wait for you. This week on the Mystery Files, we will be covering the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum theft. Oh, ah, robberies! That. Robberies, theft, <laughs> museum, not the museum, but make it theft, right? Yes, Love. basically, kind of, maybe. Interesting. I imagine, like, All missing right. tools and stuff, like, <laughs> crazy. So... Let's get into some background. Okay. So, the is a oh, <laughs> the <laughs> Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum was constructed under the guidance of art collector Isabella Stewart Gardner from mm-hmm. 1840 to 19, 1924 to house her personal art collection. The museum opened up in 1903, and Gardner continued to expand the collection and arrange it until she died. She left the museum with 3.6 million in endowment. And her and her will stipulated that the arrangement of the artwork should not be altered and no items were to be sold or brought into the collection. Ooh. Can you imagine the type of flex it is to just like start a museum from a hobby you have of That's collecting paintings? So much power. Also, like after she passed, I feel like you wouldn't want to touch that stuff. Mm-mm. She's like, don't move it. So like you know her soul's gonna be guarding that property like it's like Like the omen's gonna come back and it's yeah. like, oh like you don't want to touch that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're gonna Mm-mm. bring some demons up in your life. You don't want that. Not at all. <laughs> so by the 1980s, the museum was starting to run low on funds. This financial strain left the museum in poor condition. It lacked a climate control system and an insurance policy, mm. and it was in need of just basic building maintenance. After the FBI uncovered a plot by Boston criminals to rob the museum in 1982, the museum allocated funds to improve security. Among these improvements were 60 infrared motion detectors and a closed-circuit television system consisting of four cameras placed around the building's perimeter. Hmm. There were no cameras installed with, within the Board of Trustees thought installing such equipment in the historical building would be too expensive. So, you're saying they got all these different things except for cameras? Yeah, basically. They thought they thought um, some of the security protocol was just a little too much. Don't you think they want to, you know, like, see whoever's breaking in? If, yeah. Because I feel like you can, yeah, like, try exactly. to, like, turn off, like, certain security systems or, like... Honestly, this is just, like, irony background because it's called, like, the theft. So, it's, like, it's just it's showing, like, like, how much... They mm-hmm. messed up. <laughs> they done goofed. Like, be a little smarter, little security boys. No, exactly. So, <laughs> uh, but they did end up hiring more security guards. But despite these security improvements, the only way police could be summoned to the museum was with a button at the security desk. Other museums at the time had a fail-safe system, which required night watchmen to make hourly phone calls to the police to indicate all was okay. Mm. Which I didn't know that was a thing. At first when you said summoned, like, with the button, I imagine. <laughs> like, before you said button, I was like, they summoned them. They said, come They here, summon they Isabella say. Gardner back. They said, She's like, don't you dare touch my paintings. <laughs> they say, guard the painting yourself, Isabella. 
No, exactly. <laughs> uh, it just feels, like, super dramatic that it's, like, a button under the counter, though. Because you know how, like, in the movies, they're like, oh, yes, um, we'll be right there. And then they go, boop. We're being robbed. And then you hit and the button. And then they, like, hit the button underneath it. That's in, like, every movie. So, like. <laughs> do they expect, like, like, what do they expect <laughs> from that? So, no one's going to come, like, that quick. Like, mm-hmm. is the button really going to work? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, the hourly thing works a whole, like, lot better, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Which is, um, really, really interesting. Oh, my gosh. When I was watching, like, when we were watching the Night Stalker docu- documentary. Yes. There was, like, a little aspect that you missed. It's not, like, a spoiler or anything. But it was talking about the dentist's office that this guy was, like, caught at or whatever. Oh, wow. And so they had, like, that little button, like, in there. So that when the guy came back, they could catch him. Mm-hmm. And, like, literally, days before that, they had had all these security members guarding this place. And then they were like, oh, we can't keep paying these people to keep guarding this. So, like, we'll just, like, keep the button there and they can just press it so people can come back. Literally the day after they let all the security guards go, the -hmm. guy came in and the button didn't work. Oh, my God. So they literally missed him because they were like, oh, it's it's fine. I was like, that's so frustrating. Wouldn't you want to, like, test it or, like, something? Oh, my God. Did they not test it? Or, like, I wonder if the guy knew that, like, these people were, like, waiting for him to come and he, like, snuck in and turned off the button. I don't know. The amount of crimes that happen... Just from like, like just like bad silly, security. silly little things. Oh my gosh! But yeah, no, button. exactly. Button. So, an independent security consultant reviewed uh, the museum's operations in 1988 and determined they were on par with other museums, but recommended that they still should make improvements. Which is so mm-hmm. interesting to me that there's like people out there whose jobs are just solely to check security. Like of art especially museums. for a museum, I'm like, I yeah. get it's expensive, but like, is it like life or death? If yeah. someone takes one painting. Yeah. Also, the security director at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston also suggested that they should do some security upgrades. Hmm. If I didn't mention it already, this takes place in Boston. So. Boston, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Everyone knows I can't say Massachusetts. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> literally... You just said it. No, you just said it properly the first time. And then, <laughs> and then you didn't I'm not say scared. Her. It's like you thought about it too much. Well, yeah, because, listen, <laughs> listen, I'm going to say how I usually say it, but don't make, literally anyone who's listening, I'm so mm-hmm. sorry if I'm offending you, but this is how I said it for the longest time. You ready? Okay. Massachusetts. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm oh, literally boy. so sorry. And I, I know everyone can make fun of me, and I still can't say New it. New England's coming to bully you. Literally do it, because I'm, I'm dumb, and I don't... <laughs> Literally smack my kneecaps because I don't know how to smack say it. Ass. Smack them. Hit them with a bat. I don't you heard, you, you do. heard it here first, folks. Smack, smack the cats. Smack to the knees. <laughs> Please. Oh, my gosh. Teach me proper English. Oh, my gosh. The ghost literally just, just turned off Logan's camera, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Wait, this is a haunting. No, okay. we, we should keep it going for the audience. Okay. In case something crazy happens, paranormal, guys. Literally, okay, the hold ghost on, one on my second. mug is messing with our technology. We're still live and living color, but things are really taking a turn for the worst here. I understand what happened. Oh my gosh. We're going to be haunted today, guys. The ghost has returned. We're recording again, but what the hecky wacky was that? Yeah. This is why we do the um live stream. We love the live stream, but also like what? The entire app just like shut off. Yeah, it did. That was kind of spooky. I don't know. I, Mr. Ghost is hanging by a thread now, so I think he's really doing some damage and he knows it. I don't know. Anyway. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically, um this place just had like a lot of really bad security measures. And everyone and their mother was like, please update this. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, it's probably fine. Which made it a perfect culprit to robbery. Theft. Theft. Theft and robbery. Stealing. Lots of stealing. Robbing things from the people. Rob from the people and give to the poor as Mr. What's what's that guy's name? Robin Hood. Robin Hood. (laughs) Got it. Got it. Oh, I love it. Well, it's fine. All right. So let's get into... The robbery. Yes. Let's get Robin. All right. So, the robbery occurred in the early hours of Sunday, March 18th, 1990. The thieves were first witnessed around 12.30 a.m. by several St. Patrick's Day revelers leaving a party near the museum. Uh, the two men were di- disguised as police officers mm. and parked in a hatchback on, poli- on Palace Road about 100 feet from the side entrance. The witnesses believed them to be policemen. 
Mm. Um, they don't mention this, but the mm. one guy in this story, he <laughs> wore a fake mustache to oh be a police gosh. officer. Wow, <laughs> um, me. Which is like really, really funny. Oh my god! It just sounds like almost like a comedy trip. Like yeah. they're like, let's see if we can steal from the art museum. As if like cops can't have mustaches. Yes. That was a very specific thing they had to have to look like a cop. No, exactly. Oh my <laughs> like, god. Oh yeah, this is this is legit. <laughs> All right. So, the museum guards on duty that night were Rick Abath, who was age 23, and Randy Heston, which was age 25, very which young. is really young. Very yeah, young. very young they to got be a like job like in a museum. Yeah. Okay. To be protecting like million dollar art pieces by themselves. Okay, Ben Stiller. Like All right. I'm I'm 22 and I would be terrified of like being told to like walk. Can you imagine if you and I had a guard <laughs> museum, no, 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 no. a museum of art? We'd break something. That'd be something. kind of we'd really funny. We'd break something. It'd get robbed. We'd be attacked. <laughs> they wouldn't believe us. They blame us. It'd be bad. Yeah, that's how it'd go. There's it wouldn't it down. wouldn't go our way. <laughs> Fun this fact. sounds like a good uh, uh comedy uh movie for us. It'd if be good. We are a comedy movie. <laughs> Live and living. Comedy. Um. What was I going to say? Yes. So, Abbott was a regular night watchman and was it was Heston's first time on the night shift. Oh, Can you imagine, that. like, it being your first night in a robbery? He goes, welcome. <laughs> like, welcome to your orientation, this buddy. This is just a normal training shift. Nothing crazy. Uh, actually, we're getting robbed tonight, so be prepared. Yes. So, the security policy maintained that one guard had to patrol the galleries with a flashlight and walkie-talkie, while the other sat at the security desk. Abeth went on uh, patrol first. During his patrol, fire alarms sounded off in different rooms in the museum, uh. but he could not locate any fire or smoke. Mm. Abeth returned to the security room where the fire alarm control panel indicated smoke in multiple rooms. He assumed some type of malfunction happened and shut down the panel. Mm. He shut down the panel that indicates people. Oh my god! He went back on patrol, and before... Um, before he completed his rounds, he made a quick stop at the side entrance of the museum, briefly opening the side door and shutting it again. Aww. He did not tell Heston he was doing this or why. <laughs> Abbott completed his tour and returned to the security desk around 1 a.m., at which point Heston began his rounds. Mm, oh, no, no. Literally. <laughs> <sighs> it's just, it's so... Like, every time we do a case, every mm-hmm. time, there's just someone that's like, why? Why would you do that? Like, this first is off, one of the those common instances. sense to, like, know, oh, there's, like, this, these random alarms going off about these fires, and there's no fire. Mm-hmm. Like, there's probably, either someone has been tampering with the system, or two, it's broken, and I should probably, like, have someone come and fix it immediately. Not, <laughs> let's turn it off completely, and literally have no, like, you're not aware of anyone else in the building. Exactly. Egg. Exactly. People, get a grip. (laughs) People, people. Get a grip. (laughs) (laughs) So at 1.20 a.m., the thieves drove up to the side entrance, parked, and walked up through the side door. They rang the buzzer, which connected them to Abeth through an intercom. They explained to Abeth that they were police investigating a a disturbance and needed to be buzzed in. Mm. Abeth could see them on closed circuit television wearing what appeared to be real police uniforms. He was not aware of any disturbance, but theorized that it was a Saint pa- it was Saint Patrick's Day, so perhaps like a party goer had climbed over the fence or someone had seen it and reported it. So mm-hmm. he let the men in at one twenty four a.m. Oh my gosh! Why would there, like, if there was a party, why would these policemen be going to a museum? Well, they think that like the someone like jumped the fence, was like really drunk, was trying to get into the museum or something, because mm-hmm. there was like a backyard. To like, there was like just this like oh. really pretty garden, basically inside this museum. So they think drunk people were trying to jump over it or something. Oh my gosh! Yeah, but like letting random police officers. But what did you in? know? Like, what did you know if someone was like in the museum? Yeah, I think the security guards have enough aware, like, are aware enough to know. Well, they're also like our age too. So like, I don't know what yeah. I would do if like older policemen like showed up and were like, I'd "Let be like, us honestly, in." Honestly, I'd be like, "Take it. I don't care." I'd be like, oh, "Well, it's funny you say that." Oh no, no, no! <laughs> they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, we need to like see a prince on this or something," and they just take it. Foreshadowing. Oh okay. no! <laughs> oh no! All right, so we're gonna lose our job or die. We'll see. So the thieves were let into a locked foyer 
uh, foyer, 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 foyer. Yeah, both. <laughs> that separated the side door from the museum. They approached Abeth at his desk and asked if anyone else was in the museum and to bring them down. Abeth radioed Hester to return to the security desk. <laughs> it's just so oh, funny. My oh my gosh. I can't. <laughs> Abeth noticed around this time that the mustache on the taller man appeared no. to be no, fake. No, 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 no. It's getting progressively worse. <laughs> the shorter man told Abeth that he looked famil- familiar <laughs> and that they may have a warrant out for his arrest. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. <laughs> so, so this man is straight up wearing a fake mustache pretending to be a police officer and he tells them, I think I've seen you before. I think we have a warrant for your arrest. Oh my gosh, stop. This has the same energy of like a bunch of kids in a trench coat sneaking into a place and being like, yes, oh, I am a yes, father. Yes, yes, exactly. It's so comedic. And for what reason? They're like, I for think I've reason? seen you before. Isn't, isn't this funny? I just, I'm just imagining the mustache like slowly sliding off their face and they're like, I'm serious. I'm I just serious. feel, I just feel in like any like indication, like in any other circumstance, this plan would have never, ever, ever, ever worked. Yeah. Well, like, but honestly, they knew the fake mustache. What, uh, you literally could have done better than that. Why did yeah. you have to wear a fake mustache? It makes it more. Why did? Why can't you just like not have it on? Like what? <laughs> what, what it sounds like. Gonna make? What if he was like? I just wanted to get into character. Honestly, she just got like microbladed a mustache. Is that a thing? Stop. Oh, Is that a thing? That sounds like it would hurt. I mean, it probably microblading <laughs> itself probably hurts, but like, now I'm gonna look that up when we're done. We'll see. Oh my gosh. Google later. <laughs> um. So, yeah, basically, they were like, you have a, we have a warrant out for your arrest. So, he asked them if they could come from behind the desk and provide identification. Stop it. Abith complied, <gasps> stepping away from the desk, where the only panic button, need I remind you, mm. could alert the police. Oh, my God. The shorter man forced Abith against a wall, <gasps> spread his legs, and handcuffed him. Oh, my God. Abith noticed that he was, uh, he was not frisked by them. And then Hostin walked into the room around this time, and the taller thief turned to him and handcuffed him as well. Oh. Once both guards were handcuffed, the thieves revealed their true intentions Stop to rob the museum it. and asked the guards not to give them any problems. Oh, my. Which is so funny to me. Which is so funny to me, because it just feels like a like an evil villain scheme. Like, we're yeah. here to rob the museum. This Don't try any funny business. It sounds like either a cartoon or, like, an actual movie. No, it does. Me. It does. It's so weird. It's this so This is like some funny. Paul Blart mall cop, but make it Night at the Museum. Yes, it is. Same energy. Um, and another, uh, <laughs> apparently, um... Abeth was quoted after the incident had occurred mm. that he told them that they didn't pay him enough to, like, I mean, yeah. try to stop him. He was like, they don't pay me enough here to, like, stop you guys. I, mean, <laughs> so... I, I would feel the same way. I'd be like, well, I'm getting maybe eight an hour. Like, Yeah, I mean, you couldn't pay me, like, like, if you were even paying me, like, I don't know, like, $100 an hour, I would not be trying to stop those guys. Well, like, I was, so, I was going to say... I still I'm, have a career after this. Listen, I'm but... bad because I was going to sell myself short. I was like, I'd have to get paid at least 17 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our corrupt system, guys. If you want me to die for an art museum, pay me at least $17. At least 17 an hour. I'm a human being with rights, okay? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, my God. What a shame. Right? So, to add, um... Insult to injury, the thieves wrapped duct tape around their heads and the eyes of the guard, and without asking for directions, they led the guards into the basement, where they were handcuffed to a steam pipe and a workbench. Ouch. Wait, what part of their head was the duct tape? The, the like, hair? they, no, they, like, basically, their eye line, all the way around, like a gauze wrap. Ow. Oh, your, yeah. your little eyelashes and eyebrows are gonna be gone. Exactly. They're gonna need like, the microblading. Ne- like, was that was that needed? Was that yeah. like that's just so disrespectful? Literally duct tape on your eyes. Yeah. Are they yeah. psychopaths? Well, like even having duct pa- duck, duck, duck duct paste, duct duct tape, duct paste, duct paste, duct paste, duct paste, duct paste on your um eyes like at all would just hurt like ripping that mm-hmm. oh who what if they didn't oh. have eyelashes at they're ones? they're probably gone Logan. Oh my god, that's like a wax. <laughs> Big ouch. Never they put, got a good waxing. That's all you tell we me can... you never put duct tape on your arm or something? And yes, like, I have. It rips all, everything yeah, off? Yeah, but it doesn't rip... It hasn't ripped everything <laughs> off for me. <laughs> I don't know how long you're <laughs> No, literally, I have, like, but, no hair on my arms. So, like, the small amount I do, it's like... Oh, well, and then I have hair, red. so, like, maybe so it that's... Doesn't make a difference. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like you should pull more out if you have more hair, but, like, you do you. <laughs> you're not using the right duct tape, my friend. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> 
too much. They have a sticky residue left on their eyes for days. Uh, <laughs> so the thieves examine the wallets of the guards and explain that they know where they live and not to tell authorities anything and they will get a reward in about a year. <laughs> mm, probably about a year. We'll see. We'll see if my bank account allows me. Oh, Monthly gosh. payments. We'll see. Um, so to make this like even funnier... <laughs> It only took the thieves 11 minutes to take down the guards. So they were, like, completely, like, handcuffed to that steam pipe and everything by 1.35 a.m. And they were let in by, like, 1.0... No, they were let in uh, at 1.24 a.m. So it took them, like, 10 minutes to completely... (laughs) Override the entire thing. Honestly, they could probably take me down in, like, two minutes flat. But honestly, that's... Straight up. Yeah. I would be like, all right. I'd be like, sure. That's cool. I didn't commit a crime, but if you want, if you want to, like... Honestly, if I could have asked, I'd be like, can I, like, go home at least? I won't say nothing. I just, like, would like to sleep in my bed tonight. Like, if it's going to get robbed, I'd at least, like, a night off for once. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Set up a little bed in the basement or something. Exactly. It's so funny. You still get paid for being on the clock because you took everything over. All right, so here's where, um... (laughs) <laughs> some of the fun really kicks in oh, the yeah. stealing of the artworks Ooh, so yeah. the thieves movements through the museum were recorded on the infrared motion detectors that were mm-hmm. briefly mentioned mm-hmm. um their steps in the first room they entered the dutch room on the second floor were not recorded until 1 48 a.m this was 13 minutes after they finished subduing the guards perhaps waiting to make sure no police were alerted so like mm. they were trying to make sure like waiting their time like okay because of the whole hourly thing Mm -hmm. that was going on so as the thieves approached the paintings in the dutch room a device began beeping that would normally trip when a person would get too close to a painting the thieves just smashed it oh my god straight up just went bam you're yelling (laughs) we're trying to steal yeah so (laughs) they took the storm on the sea of galilee and a lady and gentleman in black and threw them on the marble floor which shattered their glass frames oh no yes and then they used a blade and cut the canvases out of the framings oh well they had to roll it up probably like a movie well yeah but they like basically like it was like bad like cutting so it's like the edges are like all over the place it's not straight corners which just like ruins the piece and the value literally exactly at all like it's almost like they're just wrecking for fun no one wants a rinky dink stolen piece of artwork yes so they also removed a large uh rembrandt self-portrait oil painting from the wall but left it leaning against the cabinet <laughs> they went oh forgot that they one said, oh, I, don't know. I don't know if we need that and they said we don't need a picture of her <laughs> we don't want to see her no. <laughs> my gosh so and and investigators believe that they may have considered it too large to transport it so they just like gave up oh my and gosh. didn't want to take it with them what good is that doing <laughs> So instead, the thieves took small postage stamp size of the self portraits etching by Reverend on display beneath the larger portrait. Oh. So they just like were cutting little corners of the paintings oh and gosh. taking them with them. They said, you know what? We'd probably make more money just selling bits and pieces of this yeah, one. Exactly. Perfect for our brand. Um, so on the right side of the room, they also removed the landscape with obelisk and the concert from their frames. Uh, and the final piece taken from the room was an ancient Chinese relic. Hmm. Um, so yeah, they're just had, making like interesting decisions in how they're stealing artwork. Oh my God, it's almost like. Do you think you're going to, like, sell this or anything? Like, who's going to buy this? Exactly. It's going to very clearly be stolen. Ex- yeah. And then yeah. you're like, wow, how'd you get this really famous piece of artwork, and why is it literally destroyed? Yeah. It's weird. It's just, like, it's literally, like I said before, it's just, like, adding insult to injury. Like, it's, like, if you're already stealing, like, mm-hmm. you're doing too much. But, <laughs> but honestly, if we're going to be real here, mm-hmm. like... Are you really going to, like, make back that money? Because if you think Mm -hmm. about it, as a thief, obviously you're probably most likely going to be caught eventually. And, like, your bail money is going to be a lot more than, like, what you sold that painting for. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, realistically, is it a good choice? In general, no. So at 1.51 a.m., while one thief continued working in the Dutch room, the other entered a narrow hallway dubbed the Short Gallery. Wow. (laughs) They would. (laughs) On the other end of Mm -hmm. the second floor. The other thief joined soon. In this room, they began removing screws for a frame displaying a Napoleon flag, uh, likely an effort, and were trying to steal the flag as well. 
They appeared to have given up partway through <laughs> because all of the screws were not re- removed from the flagpole. And ultimately, they just took the eagle that was on top of the flagpole. Oh, they my just gosh. said whatever. What good is that doing? Um, well, apparently, like they said, the flag, like the little eagle on the flagpole is useless. Like it's like it's you can't get it. Why for don't anything. they just cut the flag down? Yeah. <laughs> Like, they did everything else. You know, you have a good point. So you just you have a very good point. Think, like, the ridiculous thing, things they're thinking. You know, yeah. That's all I do. feel like you could, like, if you cut the flag, like, that would be a whole See, lot I easier. See, I should have been, like, the third thief. Because <laughs> I'm the realistic one, right? I go, just cut it down, you silly goose eggs. You don't need that eagle. Like, guys, you dummies. <laughs> you you can dummies. Just, you, can, you just pull out, like, a pocket knife. You're like, we can just cut it down. You see, I'd do that, and then I'd go down and talk to the nice little security guards. Oh, my god. Like, oh, you're safe. They'll be leaving soon, hopefully. Yes, so they also took five sketches from the room as well, and the last work that was stolen was the Chez Chez Tortani from the Mm. Blue Room on the first floor. The museum's motion detectors did not detect any motion within the Blue Room during the thieves' time in the building. So it's not working. Yeah, yeah. so it's like the security system they put in place was barely working to begin with. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so the only footsteps detected in the room were that night when Abeth was doing his, like, bat- mm-hmm. patrolling earlier that day. Oh, my gosh. Which is so funny to me. <laughs> this is my favorite part. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> As they prepared to leave, the thieves checked on the guards one last time and asked if they were comfortable. <laughs> Stop it. They went, are you okay? Hey, are you guys good? Are you comfortable? You co- you're are you water? all right? Well, you're not getting water because you're tied up, but good try. <laughs> Like, it's just like, oh, oh, are you, you guys, guys all cozy? Like you really thought we were cops, you idiots. <laughs> How are your heads against those little, little, um, uh, the pipes? Does, how's the tape feel? Does it hurt? Is it, is it hurting your face? Are you, are you sad you might not have eyebrows tomorrow? Yeah, well, <laughs> good for you. I can't. I've got some priceless items that I really made priceless because <laughs> I literally destroyed them. <laughs> oh my all gosh. in good fun. So, uh, the thieves then moved to the security director's office where they took the video cassettes that recorded their entrance on the closed circuit cameras and the data prints from the motion detecting equipment. The movement data was still captured on a hard drive, which remained untouched. Um, the, the frame for the Ches Tortani was left at the security director's desk. Wow. Like, they just, like, that's just so rude. They said, hey, look what we did. Like, we hey, did that. you think that thing we stole? I just wanted to let you know. Just want a little reminder, a little general yeah. reminder. Also, like, if you don't want fingerprints or anything, why would you, like, move it? Like, they were probably wearing gloves. Like, they were fine, but it was just... <laughs> I feel like these thieves had to be, like, a little bit young, so I feel like they got a sense of humor on them. Yes. Because that's the cat. That also, like, reminds me of the energy of, like, a cat when it, like, hunts its prey and, like, finds a bird or something and, like, kills it, and then it, like, brings it to you it's like look what i did and that's exactly what they did with the little picture frame yeah basically they're just cats guys so the thieves then moved to take the artwork out of the museum through the side entrance doors in which they came at 2 40 a.m and again for the last time at 2 45 a.m that is a quick trip that is a quick trip (laughs) um this is this is apparently the most like one of the most insane parts about this robbery Mm -hmm. it lasted 81 minutes so it lasted just about the runtime of a movie which is a long time for a, like a theft to happen yeah. like you want to be like in and out as quick as possible but honestly they knew they weren't gonna get caught they're like let's have some they fun took their here. time they enjoyed it like they were just like probably just like doo, 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 doo. hey look at this little pretty thing see that Aww. really could have been a movie now that we're looking at it we could have just followed them with stop the camera. oh my gosh wow we should wow. see what they're doing today maybe no. <laughs> where are they now living among us which we'll get into. Mm? Um, all right, so the next shift of guards arrived later in the morning and realized that something was amiss. Gee, I wonder why. Wow, maybe the, the tra- maybe the frame against the security <laughs> desk was an know. indication. Ah, crazy stuff. Um, uh, however, there has not been an established contact with anyone inside to be let in so like they didn't feel like suspicious because there was no like forced entry so they're mm-hmm. like oh everything's fine but also the other guards were just like missing what they think yeah, happened. exactly so they called in the security director who upon entering the building with his keys found nobody at the watch desk so he called the police the mm-hmm. police searched the building until they found the guards still tied up in the basement. Stop, wait, wait. I just, imagine how funny it would be if when those cops came, mm-hmm. the, the security guards thought they were fake cops. <laughs> not you guys again. Not you. Not you again. Please go. I'm so sorry. Oh, that would no. be so funny. <laughs> 
They're like, I don't trust you. Get your hands off me. And they just start fighting. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. So, <laughs> overall... <laughs> yeah? 13 we works were stolen from the museum. Mm. In 1990, the FBI estimated that the value of the hall was $200 million. Oh my god. However, by 2000, because I have, a ge I guess, inflation and age, they raised the stakes to $500 million worth of artwork. Oh my god. Just completely gone and probably could not even, you know, use it. Had they ever found it, like, through a weird cellar somewhere, like, real sketchy? That'd be kind of interesting. That would be kind of interesting. Track them down on the black um, market, probably. <laughs> black market cellar. They just go through, like, a Reddit page. Well, Reddit didn't exist back then. But they just go through, like, uh, the interwebs and they, like, find stuff. They're like, oh, there's a little, like, corner piece. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that, that beautiful? That color matches. Yes, yeah, so obviously, because, you know, 11 amazing, beautiful works of art, which were $500 million worth, mm -hmm. um, went missing, uh, the FBI got involved. As they do, as they should. And this is where the theories come into play. Ooh, Ooh theories. <gasps> All right, so the, thir the first theory is that, like, for suspects. Uh, mm -hmm. The first suspect, they believe, is Rick Abeth, the security guard from before. Oh, whoa. Yeah. What? Yeah, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. I hear you. Because they believe he had suspicious behavior on the night of the theft. Mm. When he was on patrol, Abeth briefly opened and shut the side door. Why? A move which some believe could have been a signal to the thieves parked outside. Mm. Almost like, hey, guys. Like, you can come in. This is oh. the time. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. So, Abbas told authorities that he did his routine to ensure the door was locked. Mm -hmm. One of Abbas' colleagues told journalists that if Abbas had opened the door routinely as he maintains, supervisors would have seen it on computer printouts and put a stop to it. Oh. But it was the only time he did it that night. It wasn't even a part of the routine. Oh? Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, so more suspicion was drawn from the museum's motion detectors, which did not detect any movement in the blue room uh, during the 81 minutes the thieves were in the museum. The only footsteps in that room that night were Abeth's during his security patrol. Mm. A security consultant reviewed the motion detector equipment several weeks after the theft and determined that they were operating correctly. So Abeth maintains his innocence... Although FBI agents are overseeing his case in the early years, so determining that the guards were too incompetent and foolish to have pulled off a crime. Wow. That that's is so mean. rude. That's, that's so, so mean. So rude. You're idiots. You don't know how to do this properly. Yes. But I feel like I could get on board with the theory of like them being involved because then it makes sense why the like thieves didn't really hurt them. You know? Because mm -hmm. they were kind of pals. Get a little chip of the money. Yes. So there was a brief moment, um, what was it? So there was a brief moment in 2015 mm -hmm. where the FBI released a security video of Abeth letting someone in to the museum. Um, oh, that's later, tea. later it was confirmed that it was the deputy security chief of the museum. Mm -hmm. However, this man just has an obsession with, like, mm -hmm. doors. Like, it is, it's wild. Oh, my goodness. Wild. Okay, so yeah, that was the first. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I can get on board, I can get on board. <laughs> so, the second suspect is Whitey Bulger, who was one of the most powerful crime bosses in Boston during the era heading into the Winter Hill Gang. Ooh, yes, gang. We're in some gangs, yes. yes bring it so, on. Um, he claimed that he did not organize the heist and, in fact, sent his agents out in attempts to determine who did because the robbery was committed on his turf and he wanted to be paid tribute for it. Oh, So, snap. basically, they ended up, like, proving that he, like, didn't do it, I guess, because of how honest he was about the situation. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was really, really weird. Oh man, I wish, I kind of wish he did. Yeah. Just for the fun of it. So, we also get a brief thing of evidence as well, which was a 1994 letter to the museum uh, to director Ann H 
Holly received this letter from someone who claimed to be a detemp- attempting a negotiation for the return of the artwork. Oh. Um, the writer explained that they were a third-party negotiator and did not know the identity of the thieves. They explained that the artwork was stolen to reduce a prison sentence, but as the opportunity had passed, there was no longer a motive to keep the artwork, and they wanted to negotiate a return. Mm -hmm. The writer explained that the artwork was being held in a non-common law country under climate-controlled conditions. So they wanted immunity for themselves and Mm -hmm. all others involved in $2.6 million for the return of the artwork, which would be sent to an established... um, Credits. Uh, the writer conveyed information only known by the museum in the FBI at the time. Whoa, 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 whoa! Why would there's they, a lot there? Why would they keep it in like a stored room of like the control of like whatever? Yes. Like, when they literally like willy exactly. nilly cut the things, and mm-hmm. also to only get two point six million of like a five hundred million worth. Yeah, ask for more. Yeah, ask for more. Know your worth, home Please. slice. That ain't it. Ask for more for yourself because like you gonna, deserve it. If you're going to be that ridiculous and pull off something that crazy, mm-hmm. like don't settle for two point six million. Exactly. Then again, exactly. be honest and turn yourself in. I don't want to condone <laughs> thieves and all that. We jazz. condone too many crimes on this show. Yes, I don't condone stealing, oh but also gosh. like if you're already going to be that awful and steal that much, why would you only get two point six million back? But yes. honestly, we can put, we can do it optimistically if we're like, oh, they're just like Robin Hood and they're going to just give the $500 <laughs> million to someone else. Tee-hee-hee. Tee-hee-hee. Tee-hee. Which they probably don't. But yeah, anyways, they, they were, they did not, like, negotiate with him whatsoever. <laughs> they were mm-hmm. like, nah, that's a little too much. Yeah. So. But they, also, how can you trust it, too? The museum director felt like it was a strong lead and basically the FBI was like, okay <laughs> like they were basically yeah. like that's cool can Good they not for you. track where it came from at all um i believe not no because they also there was coded messages inside of it so they this were. person's trying to play mr zodiac mr zodiac um oh all right gosh. so the next suspect is okay. uh brian mcdevitt brian Jake. <laughs> Disappearance. So, stop. Oh my god. <laughs> Shout out to Brian Schaefer, Disappearance. Shout out. Go check out Listen to it. Guys. Aww. Wow. Promo. Aww, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, he was a con man from Boston who attempted and failed to rob the Hyde Collection in Glen Falls, New York in 1981. That is mm. so sad to be known for, like, failing an art theft. My god. That's so sad. But honestly, if he failed something that easy, why, how could he pull off something like that? Yes. Tee-hee. So basically the reason why they thought he did it was because at one point to try to pull off this heist, he dressed up as a FedEx driver, mm. carried handcuffs and duct tape, and planned to steal a Rembrandt. Oh my gosh. Um, he was also known to be a person who apparently steals flags, since apparently that's a thing wow. that people that's what do. That's famous for. Yeah, stealing flags all over. Like I love that he was just dressed up as a FedEx driver, though. Yeah, and that's just, also, it's just so weird. I also love the way you said FedEx. I know you, FedEx? you went FedEx. FedEx? It, it, was just, it was fun. It had so much joy in it. You know how it is narrating like every episode? FedEx? Sometimes you just you just um start playing little games uh, I just, with I just love where you where you go with it got a work on my diction your diction <laughs> your articulation love. um so basically oh oh, oh. <laughs> so basically uh-huh. the fbi interviewed him and he denied all involvement within the case mm-hmm. and basically was like i didn't do it i didn't do it and they put mm-hmm. him on a polygraph and it came up that it was true um, As we know, we can't trust a polygraph. Yes. We can't trust it. Um, this is just a random side note, but they <laughs> let him go, and then after his failed attempts at, like, trying to commit crimes... Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> he moved to California and conned his way into the television and film writing industry. <gasps> wow. Oh, my gosh, that gives me so much hope for my future. Tell me yeah. how he got there. What was the key? <laughs> what did he make? Is he director? Like... I don't know, you can't ask him. He died in 2004. He's got an IMDb? He probably does. It's pretty recent. (laughs) Should I Google it real quick? Yes. Ryan We're kind of breaking our own rules this time. Yeah, this is our second Google search. Our second Google search, guys. It's a new season, new us. You know, we don't got to follow our rules. And I think that's okay. I love it for us. (laughs) Everyone can everyone should start Googling at home with us. Wouldn't that be yeah, cute? Oh my gosh. Google everyone, with us. Everyone Google at home. Everybody now. It's time to Google with us. <laughs> the kids television show. My gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. How's the IMDB search coming? Um 
Not great. Not great. <laughs> I can't find anything right now. Maybe so if any he, viewers know. Maybe he's just not a great. Let us know. He's not busting his way into the biz as much as he thought he was. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we I'm can just... find it, we'll post it on our story on Instagram. How's that sound, folks? Sounds Disney. good. We post his LinkedIn page. Oh my think he gosh. Had one. Was there a, what year did he die? 2004? Yeah. Do you think was LinkedIn? there LinkedIn? Maybe. Like on a dial-up server? Maybe on it's Facebook. Possible. Wait, what year was Facebook in 2005? I don't know. I don't, I don't know things. Nah, nah, nah. Well, we're going to find him anyway. We're going to find it just for you guys. Just for you guys. So All right. keep on searching. I'm excited to come to our last <gasps> and final group of theories. Group Which theories. plays with what I talked about earlier about something that comes up every time we do a mystery. Please let it be demons. Please let it be demons. It's, it's, Darn. Oh, all right. Oh, oh, oh. Well, oh. Um, oh, the, uh, the last theory involves... The Boston Mafia. Mafia! 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 Our favorite! Yay! We love the Uncle Mafia. Mafia. But like demons, but yes. also Mafia. Yay! So, first up is the Merlano gang. Oh, so, oh, the wow. FBI announced significant progress in their investigation in March 2013. Hmm. They reported with a high degree of confidence that they identified the thieves, which they believed to be were the members of a criminal organization based in the Mid-Atlantic and New England area. Mm -hmm. They also felt with the same confidence that the artwork was transported to Connecticut and Philadelphia in the years following the theft, oh. with an attempted sale in Philadelphia in 2002. Oh. Oh, can you believe that happened so close to us? Wow. Oh my Isn't that beautiful? So close to us? But like, in Pennsylvania. Oh, you know, yeah. like kind of like, oh, yeah. that'd be kind of fun. Kind of cute. You know? <laughs> also, Connecticut scares me. You said Connecticut earlier when yeah, you were talking. Yeah, Connecticut's a little, a little I think scary. it's the movie Haunting in Connecticut. Except, to the... except if you're a viewer from Connecticut. We love but you. we love everyone from wherever <laughs> they are, even if it's a scary state. That's not your fault. <laughs> it's a scary state. Um. So their knowledge of what happened after that is very limited. So they requested the public's help to locate and return the artwork. Mm. So in 2015, the FBI stated both thieves were deceased. Though the FBI did not publicly identify any individuals, sources familiar with the investigation said they were associated with a gang from Dorchester. The gang was loyal to Boston Mafia boss uh, Frank... Oh, <laughs> I feel like this is so wrong. Yeah. Frank Salame. <laughs> What's it spelled? It's like S-A-L-E-M-M-E. -M -M -E. Like Salem? Frank Salame. <laughs> So, I just think salami uh, is funny. Salami, I think it's spelled salami. It's me, that, that's Boston probably, Mafia boss Frank Salami. Frank Salem. Salem. Maybe I shouldn't uh, put disrespect on his name. Salami. Sorry, Frank. He's gonna have a hitman after you if he's still alive. Hey, Frank, come after Logan the Master. He lives at Beep. Stop. You're welcome. I um, picked out that dress for you. So yeah, they believe that they ran their operations out of an automobile repair shop run by. Uh, the criminal uh carmeo merlano Ooh, that's a fun yes. criminal name that is that sounds like okay. a super villain like name carmen san diego but not <gasps> that is so funny you say that because that's the reason i did this case oh my god because i finished carmen <laughs> san diego yesterday Aww, and i was like peace. i should do something about a theft that'd be fun i love that for you yeah i know oh Aww, my god wow. full circle moment full guys circle. Full that's house. not beautiful <laughs> sorry <laughs> um so yeah so, Merlano's associates may have gained knowledge of the museum's weaknesses after gangster uh, Louis Royce caused it as early as 1981. Wow. He devised plans with an associate to light up smoke bombs and rush the galleries amidst confusion. The smoke bombs? Maybe that's why the smoke went off. The smoke alarms. Oh, that then could again, be something. again, how did they not catch a smoke bomb, though? Mm. Yeah. Unless they were like, okay, we got yeah, this, Yeah, I feel like you would notice this. You would notice if a smoke bomb went Plus off. Plus a smell. You would notice a smell from it as well. Very much that, yes. Um, so in 1982, when undercover FBI agents were investigating Royce and his associated associates for unrelated art theft, they learned of their interest in robbing the Gardner Museum and warned the museum of the gang's plan. Which is so funny to me because mm -hmm. they were like, hey, this gang might be doing something. And then they still got robbed? Oh my gosh. What? Imagine getting a warning and you're like, ah, nah, it's fine. Royce is currently in prison for robbery to unrelated art thefts. Mm -hmm. um, but he shared his plan with others and believes associate Stephen Rossetti may have ordered the robbery or shared it with someone else. Mm. Yes. Stephen Rossetti. I love yes. all these names. 
They're so fun. I They're love such them. fun names. You see, I got some Italian blood in me, so I feel like one day, just one maybe, day. I could I could try to get my way in the mafia yes. world, but like not commit crimes. You know, <laughs> I don't want to commit no crimes. Yes, I like not being in jail. <laughs> you know, you know how it be. <laughs> All right, so our next mafia people who yeah. could have done it because there's multiples for some of reason, course. which is wild. Of um, is uh, Robert Garente and Robert Gentile. Aww. I feel like that's good, Cute. you know. You gotta say it with confidence, I think. Yeah, if you say anything confidently, it's kind of It's right. true. Like... If you say anything confidently, guys, it's true. Yeah, trust us. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> thinks so, anyway. <laughs> so, among those associated with the Merlano gang were Robert Garante and in Manchester, Connecticut... Um, along with gangster Robert Gentile. Hmm. Uh, Garante died from cancer in 2004, but his hmm. widow, Elaine, told the FBI in 2010 that her husband had previously owned some of some paintings. Oh. She claimed that when her husband got sick with cancer in the early 2000s, he gave the paintings to Gentile for safekeeping. Hmm. Gentile denied the accusations, claiming he was never given them and knew nothing of their whereabouts. Hmm. Um, the FBI uh, indicated Gentile on drug charges in 2012, likely an attempt to pressure him to like be mm-hmm. like, "Where's the garden of works? Oh, where where's the, the where'd you put them? Where are they at?" Um, however, he submitted a polygraph test, which indicated he was lying when mm-hmm. he denied any knowledge of the theft or the location of the artwork. Gentile maintained he was telling the truth and demanded a retest. Aww. During the retest, he said Elaine had once shown him the missing Reverend Self portrait, to which the polygraph machine indicated he was telling the truth. Aww. So it's like his little wife was in on it. Mm. Ooh. So I Gentile's lawyers felt that the veracity of Gentile's claims were being affected by the large presence of federal agents and requested a smaller meeting in hopes that it would get him to speak honestly. Mm. In the more intimate meeting, Gentile maintained that he still did not have any information. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I think it has to be the wife. Like, she just, I think yeah. she has him. I, don't I mean, think she the did. wife had to be, like, involved with Robert. Yes. At least Robert had to be involved some way. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I love that she would just have them. That's so fun. Yeah. That's so, fancy. basically, the FBI made a warrant out for, like, his home, tried to find stuff, but they couldn't find anything. They found oh, no. <laughs> they found other art pieces that were put oh, on the black my. market, but they were not ones that were related to the gardener So case. they were putting them on the black market. Wow, I was really on to something. You were, you See? were. My mafia mind, guys. You've been knowing a lot about the black market, don't you? I wish. I'm actually, I'm scared. I don't, I don't want to get involved in the black market. That seems like horrifying. Yeah. Like, what if you just look up the yeah. black market on Google and then the cops come after you? That's what I think of. Yes. Very much so. Wow. Wee wee. All right. So, <laughs> so let's get to the next mob person. This mob is person. David Turner. David Turner was also another associate of Merlano. So this is all kind of like in the same family tree. Um, The FBI began investigating him in 1992 when a source told them Turner had access to the paintings. Mm. That same year, Merlano was arrested for uh, drug trafficking and told authorities that he could return the paintings for a reduced prison sentence. The amount of times they just like be gambling with the police of like, Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this if you do this for me. But honestly, they could really just lie. They really could. Just no, to they get more really time. Really could. Like get less time. Um, <laughs> he asked Turner to track down the paintings, to which Turner was unfortunately unsuccessful. Really. Though he had heard <laughs> they were in a church in South Boston. Wow. What? <laughs> Li- how? What? Exactly. So they probably like hid them in the floorboards or something crazy. Ooh, that would be crazy. That'd be really cool. Um. Actually. So, yeah, Turner mentioned that he was involved with several break-ins into other museums. Oh, my. Except for the gardener. Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. So, it's Joking. like, it's like kind of sucks at this point because it's almost like, a, you know, it's just like, it's like they're admitting all these stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're admitting all this stuff and they're just like, oh, I don't know. Because, like, you kind of have to believe they didn't do it because why else would they, like, yeah. confess to, like, literally all these other crimes? Yes. Oh, that's so frustrating. So, uh, instead, what they did was is that they started to contact uh, David Turner's family, mm. in which uh, his siblings said that they remember a painting growing up 
that was very similar to the ones that were in the Gardner Museum. Oh. So the FBI arrested Turner, Merlano, and Rossetti, and others in a sting operation the day, the day they planned to rob um, the Loomis Fargo vault. Oh. So they just got like all these big names out of the way, even if they couldn't prove Gardner's did it. Mm-hmm. Like, if they, they, that they stole from Gardner. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. They were able to catch at least something. That's crazy. Because they, like, they like, said that they did so many crimes, and they were yeah. just kind of, like, kept getting away. Like, they were clearly so, guilty of something, and if they yes. recognized one of the paintings, like, that's enough to be like, okay, either way, yes. it'd probably be. <laughs> My God. Exactly. Oh. So, um... The last and final suspect okay. is uh, Bobby uh, Donati. Mm, he yeah. was um, unfortunately murdered in 1991 mm. in the midst of a gang war mm. within uh, the in one of the crime families. Um, however, his involvement in the Gardner theft was suspected after notorious New England art thief Miles J. Connor Jr. spoke mm. with authorities. Um, Connor was in jail during the heist, but he believed uh, D- Donati and criminal David Hodden were the masterminds behind the entire operation. Oh. Which could be true because, mm-hmm. as we know, it was two police officers. Yeah. Um, and the other thing to mention, too, which is so funny you said this, mm-hmm. is that um, Bobby was pretty young. Oh. when like he was involved like in the gang mm-hmm. so it's very possible it was baby's first heist <laughs> i love it yeah what are the heights on these guys you got a tall and a short one i hope so kind of like the guy they don't Home mention Alone. it but i sure hope That's so kind of what i imagine i can't remember the names but um same energy yeah so basically it just led to like this long like drawn out thing of them going back and forth between like everyone uh bobby knew because at the time obviously Mm -hmm. he passed away so it was um hard to really get information out there yeah they like even worked with like a lot of really big name gang members Mm -hmm. like all across the new england Mm -hmm. uh trying to find the answers but unfortunately they never had ah what (laughs) the heck yeah so Mm. What are you thinking? Where is your mind going? I feel like Theory-wise. the most logical answer to me is the last one with good old Bobby Boy. Because yes. I feel like mm-hmm. he could have had all these connections to all these different mafia members. So mm-hmm. I feel like you could like pass this along to all these people and try to keep it like in no one's yeah. hands by the time they're getting caught. Because they're like, oh, we don't have it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I, I like the know. idea of baby's first, like, theft. Yeah. Like, that's cute. Especially because of how terrible the theft actually was. Yeah. Like, I know, like, no big mob boss would try to be, like... You guys okay? Uh, like... Well, well, also, like, I think no big mob boss would want to claim something like that. Or be yeah. like, oh, God, I would never, like, try to do something like that. You mm-hmm. need to do X, Y, and Z. But their plan was super unpolished. Yeah. Which is so crazy. They were able to get away with 500 million... 500 million! dollars mm-hmm. of paintings like they just got lucky exactly. right place right time right guards mm-hmm. all that stuff yeah i also think the robert gentile theory is possible with mm-hmm. the ex-wife and stuff saying yeah. that like she saw self-portraits of it mm-hmm. so i feel like they could have been involved in the operation oh, definitely i wonder if there was any sort of connection with those mafia members yes. and the different families because i feel like Oh, well, this is, like, this is, like, all under, like, the Merlano gang family. So, So like, like, definitely connections there. It's, like, the FBI has gotten so close, as close as, like, 2015, Mm -hmm. but there's just still no indication. Was there, like, a main leader? I wonder. Because if there was, like, a main leader of this gang, like, as a whole... Well, a lot of them, like, fall from power. Like, gang members keep, like, changing it up, Mm. like, every so often. Um... Because okay. I believe the one gang member they believe to do it passed away, so they do not think that it was him because apparently that was his turf, so mm-hmm. I don't That's know. Just, I don't know, which is interesting, because I feel like the gang leader at the time could have, like, helped them plan up this elaborate yeah. thing, but they mm-hmm. could have had two other people, like, go on go on and do it. Because if they had a younger person do it, yeah, it's like, oh, we're not risking anything because, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's one thing we did, or, like, yeah. I don't know. Which is just mind Like, everyone else has, like, warrants out for their arrest, and, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. And then there's, like, one person who's, like, leading him. The other yeah. guy that's with him is, like, a little more experienced. He's like, I'm gonna show you the ropes, kid. And, like, yeah. I don't know. It just makes sense to me. Absolutely. That's cool stuff. I agree. Yeah. But I guess, uh, <laughs> the simple, Isabella simple. Stewart Gardner Museum theft will remain a, a mystery. mystery. Yeah. 
Thank you guys so Thank much you. for watching. Yes. And we will see you next week for mm -hmm. Tiffany's Case. Yes, be here. Be square. Bye, guys. Bye. I'll see you later.